Well, there are two parts to the U.S. collection of metadata. Um, first, the, the United States takes the view that we don't have any privacy interest in our metadata at all because we shared it with the phone company or the internet company. Now, the U.S. Supreme Court has kind of approved that approach 35 years ago in a completely different era when they were only talking about phone calls. And the U.S. government has just exploded that rationale to scoop up all kinds of metadata in a different age when we live much more electronically and in a moment when the government has the capacity to basically reconstruct your entire life from your metadata. So the Supreme Court has actually um, recently suggested that it's having misgivings about the sharing rationale. And I think the legality is actually very much in question. The other element is that the U.S. government um, takes the view that when it scoops up your metadata, when it puts it in a government computer, that doesn't implicate your privacy interest at all until it actually looks at it. And you know, by that rationale, they could put a video camera in your bedroom with a feed directly to a government computer and say, don't worry, that doesn't involve your privacy until we actually look at the video. You know, nobody buys that, and the court has never reviewed it. This is just something that the government has asserted, and the secret surveillance court, the intelligence court, apparently has approved it without ever hearing from anybody other than a government lawyer. Well, the interesting thing is that the U.S. government tries to say you, know, you really need to give up your privacy here because we're protecting you from the threat of terrorism. And you know, that sounds pretty scary, and maybe, maybe that would be justified until you start looking at the reality. And we've pressed the government, give us one case, any case, in which you have foiled a terrorist plot because of the mass collection of metadata, as opposed to you know, targeted surveillance inquiries, which everybody agrees is appropriate. And the U.S. government can't name a single case. They've got this massive program, a massive intrusion on our privacy, and they can't come up with one case in which they've stopped a terrorist plot essentially because of that, that mass surveillance. So um, I think that that reality, which is just dawning on people, is forcing a big time reassessment as to whether this program is worth it at all. Well, you know, the sad news is that the U.S. government is the leader on this, for better or for worse, and these days has been for worse. Um, so, yes, you know, the, the U.S. is, um, first of all, a, a part of the so-called Five Eyes Alliance, which also includes Australia, New Zealand, the U.K., and Canada. And um, these are the surveillance masters. And, of course, if they get away with this, you can imagine what the Chinas and the Russias of the world are doing. So this is um, you know, a race to the bottom. This is a setting the lowest common denominator. And that's why it's so important, um, now that we understand the scope of surveillance, to turn things around and to gain greater respect for our privacy, because that's the only way we're going to get better global respect for our right to privacy. Well, it's useful to, when you ask you know, why does communications metadata matter? Um, you know, metadata is a very abstract term. Let's look at the reality. This metadata means everybody you call on the phone or who calls you, everybody you exchange emails with, everything you search for on the web, every website you browse, and in fact, every place you go because your phone is basically a tracking device which, which sends off electronic signals about where you are. And you know, this, it can reveal, are you seeing a psychiatrist? You know, are you having an affair? You know, who are your secret friends? I mean, anything is an open book when the government looks at your metadata. So this is very personal, very intrusive information, in many ways much more significant than even the contents of our communications. So it is important to protect the privacy in this realm, except insofar as the government is absolutely needs to get in there for a narrow, focused, legitimate reason. That's not where it is now. They're just scooping it up without any regard to our privacy interests. Well, I think that Edward Snowden has done a real service to all of us by exposing this complete disregard for our privacy. Um, it should be no surprise that when the only agencies reviewing surveillance practices in the United States in particular were secret congressional committees and a secret court where there was no public accountability for what was done. And, you know, privacy is not secure and secret. Ironically, you need public scrutiny to preserve privacy. 
So I think the good news is that because of the Snowden revelations, there is a very serious public debate and reassessment about the balance between our security and our privacy. And so my sense is that the trend is actually now getting better, but from a position of rock bottom. And we have a lot of work to do to re reestablish our right to privacy.